Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part eight of my 3D printed R2D2 style droid, which is actually going to be an R6 droid. Last time I got this driving around on its motors and it's pretty fast and it transforms in three to two leg mode and drives in both modes. So have a look at last time for some more driving video. So this droid is never going to have skins on, but every piece of the body is going to be full of gadgets and details, which are going to come later, and lots of electronics. So basically it's a cutaway, so you can see how it works, and you can see that sensor foot retracting. Um, so at the moment it looks kind of hollow, and like there's some pieces missing, but in fact it's going to have lots of little utility arms that flip out, and lots of details. So it's going to be a real hacker's droid. So this time I thought it was time to get the last major piece of structure on, which of course is the head. So let's have a look at some ideas for that. So the head has to turn round and it needs to sit on some sort of bearings and be propelled with a motor. So I've got another one of these motors, which um, you may recognize it's similar to the one that I used in the center foot retracting mechanism. Only this one has a slightly lower gear ratio at 50 to one. And it makes a much more pleasing kind of robotic motor servo sound. Uh, most of the noise coming from the center foot retracting mechanism is actually the studding screeching on the nut, which I need to oil. Uh, but this motor makes quite a pleasing sound. And I've already 3D printed one of these V-belts for it, or a V-pulley, um, for my belt, which is going to propel the head round. So most R2-D2 builders use a very large bearing, which um, is pretty much the diameter of the whole droid, called a Rockler bearing, but those are quite expensive. So I'm actually going to go for smaller bearings in the middle, and then this motor, either with a rubber wheel propelling round the inside, which is how it's mostly done, or with this and a belt driving a pulley in the middle of the head. So I've got some bearings of various sizes. I was going to use these, but they're actually really heavy. That weighs about 300 grams, and I need ideally two of them stacked up to keep it upright. So I've got various other sizes. I've probably settled on these, I think, which have a 26 mil internal diameter, and I've got a pair of them. So I can put a central pole in, put the head on there, and have a drive belt that propels this round. So let's have a look at that in CAD. Here's the CAD for the basic sections of the head here. So this is an R6 droid, so it's got this kind of pointy-ish bucket-shaped head. It hasn't got like a dome like R2-D2. Um, this needs to rotate, so the top blue sections and also the gold ring rotate and the purple section and the bottom blue ring stay stationary and the green there is basically the top of the frame which I don't need to print because it already exists and I did leave holes in the frame there, you can see the four holes by the stilts so that I can bolt the head on and it's removable so um, I'm, my two bearings are going to be in, fitted into these blue things, one is the V-belt pulley the other one is just the top bearing holder, so those are going to hold the bearings and I'm going to stick an aluminium pole through, which is actually a tube which goes right through that purple thing and all the way up so that it spins nice and centrally. So the purple fins there, they kind of stay stationary and I've made um, one there with a motor mount on to mount the motor. Um, so that will run with a V-belt to turn the head round and it should go pretty quick. So as I mentioned, a lot of the RT builders don't do it this way at all. They'll have um, a wheel that, or a gear that runs around the outside, so it'd be the inside of this gold section. Um, the wheel would run all the way around, and I'm, I could still do that, so I could recess that motor down into the head more, or rather into the body more, so it only sticks into the head a little bit, um, and put a rubber wheel on it and run it round the inside of that yellow part, but I'm not sure if that's going to do weird things with the bearings being right in the middle, like push it upwards or downwards or cause it to wobble. So um, I'm allowing myself the ability to do both. It'll go much faster if I put um, a drive belt onto that small spindle in the middle, but there's still an option to sink it down and put the motor in the body, running around the inside of the yellow piece with a rubber wheel, so that's another option, and there's plenty of space inside the body of the droid to do that. So all of these pieces are again 5mm sections back to back, these are printed in um, two halves and the head is fitted, printed into quarters for most of these parts so that I can fit these on the bed of the Lulzbot Taz. So we better get printing!
And here is the custom made kit for the R6 head. It's actually quite a lot more parts than I thought there were, but we better get sticking. I'm getting there, I've got the rotating fins stuck together back to back, which makes really nice pieces of plastic. I've got my bearings mounted in this piece. So both these rotate really freely and I've hammered my aluminium tube through the bearing which is a very snug fit which is obviously um, canned in the other end but that gets chopped shorter and pushed into this piece that sits about here. So that should be good and then the fins fit into these gaps and the top of the head sits on top of that. Here's the main rotating mechanism which seems to work pretty well. So that's obviously the top of the head. So now I've just got the big rotating ring to put together and the base for this to sit on. All right, here it is. So we better stick that on top of the droid. Okay, here it is, so it looks pretty good. I've bolted the uh, ring onto the body. So that looks pretty good. So the thing to point out is that the aluminium pole you can see there stays stationary and it's a tube which means that I can run wires up it and put a slip ring on the top so that I can get um, basically power and data into the head through that rotating piece. Now my motor is intended to fit in here with a bracket which is currently printing and then I'll put a drive belt on to drive this. So the other option was to sink this motor down in the body and have a big rubber wheel that rolls on the inside of this. Um, the only challenge is it would have to be sprung with a mechanism to make sure it always grips, um, which I'm not quite up for building at the moment. I could do in the future, but for now I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to 3D print a NinjaFlex drive belt that's exactly the right size, and then we'll power it up and see how fast it goes. I've installed the drive belt there, which I've printed to be exactly the right size, so that again, there's no tensioner on this, it's just the way it is. And I've wired that motor to a speed controller, which is the same as the ones that I used in the wheels for driving, and that's wired to just the battery at the moment. And I've got my radio control transmitter here. So obviously that's a speed controller, so if I um, hit the stick there, I can control the rotation of the head, and the other way as well. It goes faster in one direction than the other because the speed controllers don't go so fast in reverse because when you're driving a radio control car you don't want to go backwards so quickly. So it only goes slowly one way and much faster the other way but that doesn't really matter. It's pretty good and it makes a good robot sound as well. So my electronics are crudely set up again, we're just going to give that a drive. Obviously I've got my rotating head working so we can hopefully do that thing where we spin and turn the head in the opposite direction. I'm pretty happy with that despite some of the design challenges I've had along the way with the legs and so on which I've pretty much forgotten about now. So short of me doing it all again that'll do for now and it's a really good basis to build on. So as I said before this droid is not going to have any skins, it's going to have lots of devices, gadgets, lights and all of the detail parts in all of the cavities and there'll still be plenty of space to see through and see the centre leg retracting and so on and you'll be able to see all the electronics and all of the wires being routed and all of the good things that go into building these droids you normally don't see because they're covered up with the skins. Similarly the head's going to have lots of details and I'm also going to try and do some electronics soon so the next thing is going to be building a proper servo mixer out of an Arduino so that I can push my stick straight forward to go forward and left and right to go left and right instead of having to do this weird diagonal thing to control both channels. I'm also 
also going to do some future videos on the electronics and actually hacking into this transmitter so that I can use the two spare channels, five and six. And instead of having analog channels, I'm going to make those into um, about 20 digital channels each, again with the use of an Arduino on the receiving end. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out more updates on this project and other projects.